Hello guys, I want to talk about or react to a video that has been making the rounds regarding uh, Dr. Ruben Abati, who made a statement that Igbos don't sell lands to outsiders but go to other states to buy outsiders land is totally an assertion in past states. Actually from an experienced journalist, just because he heard former minister Chief T.O. S. Benson, who died in 2008, just some, some years ago, um, alleged that he was denied of a land uh, for his Igbo wife by her Omuna. Of course, Omuna is regarded as like a kindred. Okay, so um, having said this, I think we should, I think we should listen to the video where he made this statement and let's see uh, what we can you know uh, take out from it there is right if he says that Igbos are entrepreneurial mm -hmm. and i end by what people say about Igbos. that if you enter a community a village you don't see an Igbo man there please pack your things and go <laughs> it means that place is not conducive however let me give the flip side mm -hmm. Chief Tos Benson, T.O.S. Benson, former Minister of uh, Information, now lead. I, on one occasion at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, and I'm not making this up, he said it publicly. If anybody can contradict me, let them do so. He's, he said something about Igbo people. He said he had an Igbo wife and had an Igbo daughter that he wanted to buy land in Igbo land for his daughter, for his wife. To say, I'm getting old. Thus Benson is getting old. Let me build in this place for my wife. He said that his in-laws told him that they don't sell land to outsiders. That is the irony of Nigeria. It was the politics of federation of unity. The same Igbos who are so industrious that they are all over and they do well in other parts of Nigeria. You go as a non igbo man to go and buy a umunandant. You will be told that you don't belong, even as an in-law. That's uh, by way of an aside. But these are the issues, in my view. Well, all right. We'll take another step. You heard the video for yourself and uh, heard what Dr. Dr. Abati said, Dr. Ruben Abati. Well, I'll, I'll pick out four things from what he has said. First, I'll say that this criticism came at a wrong time, as if Dr. Ruben Abate has been looking for an opportunity to vent his mind about the Igbos. He couldn't even wait, wait it out or let the praise of the Igbos by the Senate President God, uh, Senator Goswell Apabio die down or the eulogy on, this, on the late uh, Senate, Senator Ifai uh, Oba settled before coming with a divergent, misconstrued view of the Igbo narrative. Secondly, this assertion coming from a researcher with a PhD degree and a journalist who is experienced to do an in-depth research before coming on national TV to make such false generalization. A uh, generalization statement about the people of one ethnic group leaves much to be desired. Uh, the, the question begging for answers is, for me is, was, was there research done by Dr. Ruben Abati to come up with this assertion? What could have been the sample size if there was any research done, you know, to come up with something like this? Is, or did you just make out something or because uh, Chief T.O.S. Benson, you know, made this statement, though, so he took it as, but the way he narrated it, he, narr he, narr he narrated it like as if he was the one that actually said it, you understand, because at the end of the day, you will find, in fact, you heard it from the video, at the end of the day, he made a statement that made it look as if he was the one that actually, or that was his opinion concerning that, and not the opinion of TOS person, that's Chief TOS person. So thirdly, where would... Chief TOS Benson even go to his <laughs> his in-law's house or his in to his in-law to request for a land 
to build a house for his wife when the wife was already married to him. You know, in fact, in Igbo land, he's not heard of. He's more like a taboo, you know, or a, an abomination for you to, you know, get married to a woman and you are, you are requesting for a land to, you know, build for the same woman that you're married to, to build for the same woman. In the father's, in the maybe Umuna's uh, land or whatever, the collective land that every Igbo person within their premise owns. To, for, for them, what they might be thinking would be like uh, that you, you are trying to bring back their daughter, which already you have paid for the bride price. So why, why do you want to come back again? Why don't you build the, the, the land in Yoruba land where you, are, where you are from? So why come to you know, Igbo land to build the, the same the, the, the land? So that's, so that's the issue here that, um, or that could have even been the context you know, why the land was even rejected, you know, uh, uh, the request from Chief Tio Bensi was rejected. Uh, so, but for Dr. Ruben Abati to take it up like this and run with it, you know, it calls for some scrutiny and some questions, you know, as to why he just jumped on it and uh, used it to, you know, form his narrative. Finally, Dr. Ruben Abati said, and I quote, you go as a non Igbo man to buy land. You will be told you don't belong, even if you are an in-law. So from, from what he said here, I, I, think, I think he was just trying to be clever than half. You know, it was, I, I think he was just trying to be clever than half uh, by saying that though they might be industrious, they also have this side of them that I am calling your attention to. So I feel that this is him trying to discredit the Hebrews, you know. So because um, in one breath, in one breath, you are saying, "Oh, they are industrious," but I think you should also put a searchlight or give me a searchlight on this part where I think uh, they need to be called to, called to order or something like that, you know. So actually when we are, everybody's looking at, you know, uh, a united front, you know, for Nigeria and all that. But let me say something here. The fact here is that we are not given the context by which this land was denied in the first place. That's one thing which uh, Dr. Ruben Rabatis should even... Uh, uh, what they call it, could have given it a break, kind of, before running with his assertion or running with his narrative. So, why use it as a premise to generalize that Igbos don't give out their lands to outsiders, knowing that this has been an unending narrative by some unscrupulous, faceless elements on social media, especially on X, to continue their Igbophobic attack and drive home their Igbo hate. My take is that, since the man is not alive and not here to defend what he said. I feel the late Chief TOS Benson might have been quoted out of context in this regard by Dr. Ruben Abati. So uh, there's no point trying to use whether I'll call it a quote or a statement made by uh, the late Chief TOS Benson to create an agenda in, in you know, in recent time, that Igbos don't, because I feel it's just a generalization. So why would you say Igbos don't give out their land, uh, even when you are an in-law? You know, so uh, that is sending a false message, you know, to people out there that every Igbos, every Igbo is like that, or every, uh, or Igbos are like that, something like that. You know, so that is not, is not a, a good way to say it. And again, on national TV, that is not, that is not cool. So it beats my imagination to reason that a lot of churches, such as Redeemed Church, Redeemed Christian Church of God, Winners, Deeper Life Church, Christ Embassy, and many others that are owned by so-called outsiders from different ethnicities, 
are all over the place in, in Southeast. There are a lot of banks, bank branches that are also owned by uh, bank branches like GT Bank, First Bank, Union Bank, a lot of them are owned by, uh, even FCMB are owned by so-called outsiders as well. Uh, then you have the Elsa Yoruba communities that are scattered over the southeast. Um, some of them have settled there with their families. There are a lot of settlement, uh, uh, settlements and all that. Uh, actually, the Elsa community, and of course, I know about the Yoruba communities in Abia State. You know, a lot of them are there's Naba in Abia State. So a lot of them are settled there. Uh, this I also know about a man that owns a, a Yoruba man that owns a school in Anambra State. So I want to ask, did those did the man build his school in the air? I don't think so. I don't think so. So um so I don't think this narrative would have been something that would uh, be generalized just like that on national television. For the benefit of most people that might eventually listen to this video and are from other ethnic groups in Nigeria or even outside Nigeria, Omona land is typically depicted as ancestral lands. So let me just take you through what I know about the Igbo culture. The Igbos consider their ancestral land as a communal property meaning it belongs to the entire extended family or kinship group, which is usually assessed by members in the family, in the family unit or kindred for different purposes. This is rooted in the belief that land is given to them by their ancestors to pass down to generation to generation, especially to the end. Secondly, in the traditional context, Ancestral land inheritance in Igbo land mainly follows the male line, with women not having direct uh, rights to inherit ancestral lands in Igbo land, not even inherit from their fathers. However, some Igbo families with a lot of lands available give to the female line, but not the ancestral lands. She can be given a, a house or she can be built a house in her father's ancestral land, you know, ancestral compound, in most cases, if she's not married though. Uh, but when she's married, it's assumed that she is now part and parcel of the man that married her. So there's no way the man will be demanding for, uh, for the father to give, her, to give him a, 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 a space or a land within, within the compound to build a to build a house for, or to build a, uh, yeah, to build a house for, for the wife. Uh, that's not the tradition. The husband of their daughter is free to build a house for his in-laws. Nobody is contesting, uh, contesting that. Igbos have their belief that a, a cause or even death is placed on any male line or first son that sells ancestral lands to anyone, whether outsider or even Igbo person. So the outsider we are talking about here now is someone that is not within the family. So you cannot even sell that land to someone that is, you can't sell that land at all. You can't sell that land to anyone, whether the person is Igbo. So it doesn't have anything to do with whether you are Igbo or whether you are outsider. The point is that uh, traditionally, you cannot sell the land that has been given to you or that has been yeah that has been passed on to you from your father as the male either as a heir or most times as a first son you're not supposed to sell any land that has been given to you from your forefathers or that has been passed down from forefather to your father to you yourself so those kind of lands you can't sell them so not all lands owned by families are part of ancestral land. That's the third one. Some were bought by some fathers and shared to their family as, uh, and shared to their children as a gift or inheritance for farming activities or business or even for them to build their build house and stay, maybe in case they want to come back to the village and all that anytime. And, and that's, but it's not really an ancestral land. 
meaning it was bought by their father, you know, just to be able to hand over something as an inheritance to the children. One thing is for sure, that if you are interested in buying land in the East, you will definitely see land to buy, but not ancestral lands. That is lands given to the male line from generation to generation. You will definitely, there is no way you want to. So a lot of people from different ethnic groups, you can't tell me that there is no, uh, in Igbo land, it's only Igbo that inhabits Igbo land. It's not, pos it's not possible. There, there are even even when I when I schooled in the east, I I, I knew a lot of uh, what they call it, my my uh, tertiary education. I had a lot of people from Yoruba land, people from Edo, different even houses, just a few houses though. But I had a lot of it was it was a federal university, so diverse diverse ethnic groups, you know. So and a lot of them were staying with their families around there. So you can't tell me that they were just living on, they were living in the air or, you know, they were living in space then coming for lectures every other day. It's not possible, you get. So I'm not saying people that are just coming to stay a bit and go back. Some of them were living, living in the East with their family, you know, and schooling there and schooling as well. So they already, some of them were already mature and all that. So a lot of people, uh, things have gone beyond trying to create this narrative. You know, I hear, I see it on social media. People try to create it. And though some, most times it's just out of uh, this uh, ibophobic attack and all that, uh, people talking about, uh, actually, the, the narrative that uh, Igbos dominate wherever they come and all that. So all those things, are not things that we are supposed to be talking about in this 21st century. And it should even be coming from people we see as uh, maybe experienced uh, journalists or media people and all that. So I think uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't even come up at all. I will close this with what Dr. Ruben Abati's colleague Oji Obe of Arise News said. You cannot paint a whole ethnic group with just one brush that someone refused to uh, that someone refused to give you their ancestral land or their Omuna land does not mean that the whole Igbos are like that or someone refused to give you a land uh, or sell a land to you does not mean that the whole Igbos are like that after all in this in in Lagos you, yeah, you come to rent a, a flat as an Igbo person. Most times, most landlords that are Yorubas will tell you that they can't give Igbos land. They can't give Igbos, uh, what they call it, uh, their house. So, but we can't say that all Yorubas are like that. Because after, after, after all said and done, you will still find that one person that is able to, you know, give you as long as you are able to pay. That is it. So you can't paint a whole ethnic group with one brush. That is just the that is just the fact. So um, so I I think you should just go get your facts right, Doctor Ruben Abati. Thank you for watching. Please, guys, share your thoughts on this video at the comment section. And if you are new to this channel, please do well to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you will be the first to know when we post our next video. Don't forget to, be, to like and share. Thank you.